Welcome back to the Ultimate Weight Protein Guide with Brad Newton. In this coaching session, we're going to be talking about how much protein you need every day, depending on the goal that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so there's not one size fits all. Your protein requirements will depend on the goal that you're trying to achieve. Now, it's a complex question to answer because I know you want the simple answer of you need this many grams of protein per pound or per kilo body weight, but there are so many different factors involved. If you have a look on your screen, these are just a few of the factors that influence how much protein you need every day. So for example, the intensity of your training session. So for example, if you're jogging, you'll need less protein than somebody who's sprinting which will then lead less protein than somebody who is sitting on the couch, right? So if you're watching Netflix, for example, on a regular basis, you won't need as much protein compared to somebody who's bodybuilding, who's in the gym five, six days a week lifting weights, right? So your energy intake, how many calories you're getting every day also influences how much protein you need, not to mention the quality of the protein source. So really low grade uh, quality protein sources will mean that you'll need more of that particular protein to get the amount of protein you actually need. And of course, how much, and there's number number of different factors as well, like age and whether you have an injury, there's a lot of factors that influence how much protein you need. I like to keep things really simple. Now, there's a lot of research out there that conflicts one you know, research paper says you need this much protein and this one says you need this amount of protein. I've broken it up on your screen according to three separate goals. So the first one being Netflix. So if your primary goal, if you're watching this, you have no interest in training whatsoever. You have no interest in transforming your body and going to a whole new level and that does not interest you whatsoever then Netflix is going to be the one that you're going to be concerned with. In other words, you're a sedentary person. So if you're a sedentary person, then your protein requirements are going to be 0.8 grams per kilo per day. For my American friends, it's about 0.36 grams per pound per day is recommended right, to maintain health because protein, as we've talked about, is responsible for building anti antibodies and enzymes and hormones. So even if you're not going to the gym and training, you still need protein to survive, right? Otherwise, if you get less than 0.8 grams per kilo per day or 0.36 grams per pound per day, then you're probably going to get sick on a regular basis, right? So if you're not concerned with training, that is going to be how much protein you need thereabouts. However, I'm sure that you're watching this because you have the desire to you know, take your body to a new level, to really transform your body, to build some muscle, lose some fat, right? Most people watching this care about that. So therefore, I'm going to focus more on the next two. If you're looking at doing any kind of endurance training, so if you're looking at doing, you know, like a half marathon or a full marathon or anything that involves endurance, then your protein requirements are going to be higher. They're going to be in the vicinity of 1 to 1.6 grams per kilo per day of body weight in protein or 0.45 to 0.72 grams per pound per day for my American friends. Okay. And if you are looking at lifting weights, going to the gym and working on strength training, so you have endurance on one side and you have strength on the other, so you're looking at going to the gym, lifting heavy weights, building some muscle, losing some fat, then your protein requirements are going to be higher once again. Your protein requirements will be higher than somebody who's an endurance athlete. And the science backs that up. So it's going to be somewhere in the vicinity of 1.6 to 2.0 grams per kilo or 0.72 to 0.9 grams per pound. If you're my American friends watching, you can rewind and just take notes on what that equates to in pounds. So 1.6 to 2.0 grams per kilo or 0.72 to 0.90 grams per pound per day of protein. 
So most people watching this would be concerned with building some muscle, losing some fat. Now, the research says you don't need any more than about 1.8 grams per kilo per day of protein to maintain muscle. The clinical research pretty much says you do not need any more than about 0.8 grams per pound or 1.8 grams per kilo of protein per day. And anything more than that, you're doing it for a different reason. For example, if you're wanting to maximize fat loss, and I'm going to branch into a little bit of my meal planning course, which you can have a look at, my meal planning mastery course, I talk more about these details in that course. If you're wanting to maximize fat loss, your protein requirements will be slightly different than somebody who's wanting to maximize muscle gain, right? So that's why I've put a slash here. I've separated. You want to build some muscle, you want to build maximum amounts of muscle, or you want to maximize fat loss, two separate goals. I talk about that in the other course, the meal planning course. Your protein requirements are going to shift a little bit. They're still going to be in this range, but they're going to shift a little bit. So really quickly, without going into the other course, you want to maximize fat loss. How do you do it? You need to be in a calorie deficit. Eat less calories than what your body needs every day. You will lose fat. That's the only way to lose fat, to put your body in a calorie deficit. Eat less calories than what your body needs every day. That means your protein requirement will be a little bit higher. It's going to be closer to this number here on your screen, 2.0 grams per kilo or 0.9 grams per pound per day if you're maximizing fat loss whilst in a calorie deficit. If you're wanting to maximize muscle gain, then you have to be in a calorie surplus, eat more calories than what your body needs every day, be in a calorie surplus to build maximum amounts of muscle, your protein requirements are going to be slightly less. In the meal planning course, I talk about it in terms of percentages. The percentages of protein of your target calorie number is going to be slightly different. Check out the course, you'll know what I'm talking about. So essentially what that means is that we need to figure out what your goal is now because you know how much protein you now need. I mean, I've just told you in numbers, depending on the goal that you're wanting to achieve, forget the Netflix joke, right? That's just my sense of humor, right? Because I know that if you're watching this, you don't want to be sitting down watching Netflix all day or sitting in the office and not care about any kind of training. You care about these last two here. You want to do a marathon, half marathon, you'll lift some weights, lose some fat, that kind of stuff. You have the numbers in front of you. It's what do you do with those numbers now? That's what I care about. Even though the science slightly overlaps and there's a little bit of conflicting information and different scientific papers recommend you know, different amounts of protein and all this kind of stuff, it gets, it gets confusing, but these are the approximately correct numbers. As long as you're in this ballpark number on your screen, then you've got this single piece of the puzzle sorted out. Now it's how do you use this information to actually get the result that you want? Because it's not just about protein requirements. If you want to build a great physique, you need to figure out how much carbohydrate you need and how much fat you need. Because carbohydrates and fat work together. And fat plays a role as well, remember, because fat regulates hormones such as testosterone, which is the primary driver for building muscle. So we can't just eat all this protein, build all this muscle without considering how much carbohydrate you need, how much fat you need. I'm going a little bit beyond your question because it's essential that you take this information in context with an actual practical transformation. If you guys know me personally watching this, you know I give a shit about how I can use information to get results. I'm telling you guys as your coach here, and if you're standing, you know, just imagine we're standing in the same room, I have the same conversation with you. It wouldn't be any different that you have the information now, figure out what are you going to do with that information? 
how you're going to apply it. Because if you want to lift weights to build muscle or to maximize fat loss, you need to figure out, you've already figured out the protein. Now you need to figure out how much carbohydrate you need, how much fat you need, and then work that into a meal plan, some kind of structured meal plan, where that can get you the result that you want. Check out the meal planning course I've got. I go into more detail about how you can create meal plans and actually transform your body. And you can use the information I've given you. In that course, I use percentages. So that's the information you have in front of you. How are you going to use it? So ultimately, another question that I usually get is what happens if I don't get enough protein and I train in the gym? What, what will happen is that you'll break down muscle. And on your screen, I've got, you know, it increases catabolism. So in other words, if you're not getting enough protein every day and you're training in the gym, if you're getting less than the numbers on your screen and you're training in the gym, you will lose muscle. Your muscles will go catabolic. You'll be what they call being in a negative nitrogen balance. A negative nitrogen balance. So you have a positive nitrogen balance and a negative nitrogen balance. This is going a little bit beyond what you've come here for. Because these numbers on your screen, they're calculated using a nitrogen assessment, right? How much nitrogen is going in through food, meat, eggs, dairy, legumes, nuts, that kind of stuff. Stuff that you consider high in protein contains high levels of nitrogen. And that's measured against how much nitrogen is being excreted, urine, skin, hair. And so scientists will measure the difference between nitrogen going in, nitrogen going out, nitrogen balance. They can determine how much protein you need based on those factors. A little bit off topic. So if you're not getting enough protein, your body will be in a negative nitrogen balance, which means that your body needs more protein, not just to build muscle, but also to repair cells, to rebuild enzymes, to rebuild hormones, to rebuild antibodies. All of that stuff requires protein, requires amino acids. Okay, so have a look at that on your screen. I want this to be a mission for you now that you know how much protein you need. What are you going to do with that information? Figure out the goal you're wanting to achieve first. Sit down, think about how this information is going to benefit you. And then how you can apply it within a broader scheme of, pro of carbohydrate and fat into a meal plan that's going to get you the body you want. So I hope that this little coaching session has been helpful. I've gone over my time. If you have any questions, email me, brad at seekfitlife.com. I'll happily answer any questions about this. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. 